while I've been going through this journey to a better life, one of the healings, if not the most important one, was to find out who I am before I die. I don't know, to explore the things that we keep hidden because society isn't talking about it. Some of us want to question everything we've been told and find out for ourselves what we believe our truth is. When I was close to death, the thing that hurt me the most, the thing that destroyed my soul at the most, that I thought that I was going to go to my grave without anyone knowing who I was and n me not knowing who I was because I was living, I was masquerading, I was living a lie. I was being the way that society told me to be. I was doing all the things that society told me that I needed to do. And inside, I was feeling like this isn't the reality. I don't think this is right. Something's just not right with this reality. But I was just going through the motions, being like everybody else and just being fake. I was trying to be normal and I knew the things that I was thinking weren't normal because that's not what I was seeing around me. It's not what people were talking about. It's not what people were doing. And I really feel like I've been given another chance at life. I don't know how long I have. I don't know how long you have. No one knows how long they have. But everything is different now because I am following my truth and that has saved me and there's a lot of things that have saved me but speaking my truth was the most transformational and I feel really strongly about not wasting whatever I have left trying to impress the masses trying to fit in trying to say what you expect me to say what you want me to say because you think you have this certain idea about who I am because you can't go anywhere without living this lie. You can't speak to anyone without holding back. It drives you crazy. And I think many people in mental institutions are perfectly sane. And they're the, probably the sanest ones of us all because they've, they've gone, I'm not going to conform to this way that people have told me to live. This doesn't feel right. And then their mind can't deal with it because they're not allowed to express these difference of opinions. So if I'm mental, I'm mental, you know. And I think we need to question everything. I need that we need to question all these things that we've been told. Because as we question them, we realise that, like, okay, we can go extreme. We can go extreme with our questioning and, and you know think everything's a conspiracy and things like that. But you know what? Some things are a conspiracy. Some things are as mad as it seems, and people don't want to believe it so they put the blinders on and go well that person's crazy and they might not even think that person's crazy but they just don't want society to think that you think the same way as that person who is not afraid to speak their truth who is not afraid to question all these things that are going on at the end of my life living this thing of hey I was successful wasn't even a blip it is so meaningless at the end of your life. Meaningless. You're not going to care. Life is bigger than that. It's much more than that. And we're actually conditioned to believe that being rich is being success. Being famous is being successful. We're conditioned to believe to go after these things, to go after the house, the 2.5 kids, the the dream but that's somebody else's version of the dream we're here for different things I think we're here to experience experience just to experience having stuff having possessions we can't take that with us when we die and I can't believe we fall for that that somehow that our valuable possessions mean anything at all when we're dead can't take any of it with us I was a little bit upset that I couldn't take you know couldn't leave anything behind for my family because that's how I've been conditioned you know that that you've got to leave something behind a house a future something to make their lives easier something we are conditioned to believe that that's the you know 
at least in this society, at least where I'm from, it's not the stuff, it's not the possessions, it's not, they don't hold any value. They, so the big distressing part of thinking about my funeral, about my death, it was that, oh my God, you know, I, I spent all this time, I wasted all this time in four walls trying to be a success and make money so that I can make my family's life more better. But the biggest part was, I'm going to go, who's going to, if anyone turns up to my funeral at all, which I wasn't even sure, you know, my self-esteem was so low by that stage that I was thinking, well, no one would turn up anyway. But if they did turn up, they wouldn't have even known who I was because I was too busy to be a part of their lives and when you're at that when you're at the end that human connection thing is actually what you think about that no one even knew who I was I never like I was suffocating and never spoke my truth and the, what would they say what would my tombstone say it would, here lies Penny she was busy she was too busy actually that was the mantra that used to come out of my mouth. I was too busy. Too busy. And I think other people also live this lie. They, they live the way that they're, they think they're supposed to live. They're not living, they're not following anything inside them. They're not following their soul, their heart, their gut, their instincts. They're on autopilot. They're running a program that was taught to them since before that they could you know, before they could even walk. I think a lot of us are being fake, that we don't even know who we are. We live the way that we're conditioned to believe. We live the way our culture has taught us to live. That's what culture is. It's just mass conditioning of groups. Mass control of groups. To be a certain way, to think a certain way, to speak a certain way, to think the same. We're all sheep, we're all drones, we're all zombies. Afraid to think for ourselves, afraid to think differently, afraid to speak our mind, afraid to be seen as different or weird. We're all people pleasers. And only those who are questioning it are starting to realize that speaking our truth is crucial to undoing that. That life is more amazing and powerful than we had ever imagined possible. That we actually have been kept from the truth. I don't think it's on purpose, uh, uh, to the most part, I don't think it's on purpose. I think it's just been just generational brainwashing you know, through the generations. But now that we're all starting to wake up and people are starting to speak about what they actually think is going on with lots of different things, we can undo this control. We can put a stop to the generational brainwashing. It's not easy though. <laughs> I don't want to live in a prison. I don't want to keep all my thoughts hidden deep inside. I never questioned my beliefs. I never questioned why I believed the things that I believed. The instincts. I never trusted my instincts until everything was lost. And that's when I went, should have trusted my instincts. Every single terrible thing that's ever happened in my life had a, a gut warning that I should have listened to. We have the ability to listen to our inner instincts, our soul, our higher consciousness, whatever. We can trust that, but we also have to question our beliefs because we know that we are completely conditioned. It's You can listen to your brain you can listen to logic, and I, and we do, but I wish I'd known how right my gut was. And when your gut is screaming at you, 
with the answer and you using logic to disregard it. And your heart says one thing, but your gut saying, no, 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 no. Part of speaking my truth, I know I'm going to be tested. Every interaction you have with somebody else is an opportunity to speak your truth, but also you have a conditioned response to not do that. I still have to bite my tongue a lot. I have to bite my tongue commenting. I have to bite my tongue at work. I have to bite my tongue now. It's a constant struggle to try to speak your truth. We are so conditioned to have people like us and we want to be seen as normal. That fear is very real because we've had it ingrained in us all our lives. Bad things happen. Uncomfortable things happen when you speak your, your truth. Conform. Obey. Do what everyone else is doing. Sit down. Shut up. <laughs> and I believe that as I um, speak my truth, that my beliefs will change, that my truths will change. They will evolve, and they will, that we don't actually need to agree on anything at all. I don't need anyone to validate my experiences. You don't need anyone to validate your experience. It is what it is right now, in this moment. It's like just verbalizing things, getting it out there, opens up the channels for unveiling more. We've just got to remember that we're, the, we're a sum of all of the conditioned beliefs. We got told who we are before we even had a choice about it, before we even were conscious to question why or think for ourselves. We, we believed the people we grew up with and learned our first beliefs from. The first seven years we weren't even conscious to questioning our realities. We were just downloading whatever information was being offered to us. A lot of the beliefs we carry around with us right now was programmed into us before we even had the ability to question it. We had questions and they were answered by educational institutions and parents and extended families and society and by watching and observing our community and everybody around us and, and watching the TV. A lot of our beliefs aren't even our own beliefs. We can't even trust our own beliefs. So I'm going to speak my truth as it is today because that's how I'm freeing my mind. That is the most healing thing I can do for myself. I don't need people to agree with me. I just need an outlet for my thoughts. YouTube and, and these videos, this is the next stage for me to explore my own beliefs. I've already written a lot of things on my blog and in journals and in unpublished books. I've explored things that way. But YouTube is my next step for me. A way to catch my automatic programming, a way to discover and explore my belief system, and a way for me to get more truth to be revealed to me. And as I watch other people speaking their truth and then questioning whether they did the right thing, like thinking for themselves and then wanting to automatically go back to conforming to the masses, I understand that fear. <laughs> I know that fear. I also live that fear. We want to be liked, we want to be understood, we want to be able to persuade people to help themselves and we fear that we won't be able to if they kind of switch off because our current beliefs are in direct conflict with their current beliefs. And when I see people speaking what they're holding back, when they are giving us a, like a little glimpse to what they keep hidden deep inside, it shows that they're starting to question the norm starting to question the reality and the programming that they've been given. Find out who you really are. Grow and evolve and let people really know who you are before you die. You don't get another chance, as far as we know, instead of just blindly following the masses. This is the biggest problem in the world. It's, it's that we just conform. We're sheep. And that makes us powerless to change anything. We need to get our power back. We are a suppressed society and we've been like this since birth. We've been controlled and conditioned by everything around us. Conformity 
is people like acting like everybody else without even knowing why. We're all unique individuals. We're all looking at and experiencing the same thing, but with different lenses. We shouldn't fight about who is right, because there is no right. There's only different perspectives. I believe that our suppression of our thoughts is how we as a society is being controlled. I think it's our greatest mistake, and I think it's our greatest fear. It's just a fake life. Not living true to my soul. What a waste of a life that was. Just playing out a broken record, I was brainwashed. Just living unconsciously and doing what everyone else was doing just because everyone else was doing it. So I am trying to speak my truth, but every day is a bit of a struggle to do that. And I'm tested a lot. I see something and my beliefs are so strong and I'm so passionate about it. But I'm also aware that I'm conditioned and I'm brainwashed and just as much as you are or the next person is, we're a result of everything we have ever experienced and all those beliefs we have taken on, even in a second, when we, we've had an innocent conversation with random people throughout our lives and because we want to get along with them and not be seen as weird, so in every single conversation that we have, we try and find things that resonate with us, that are the same, we seek similarities. You're trying to do it right now with me. We try and be likable and we try and find common ground. We're always trained to agree with each other. And we've confused being nice, what we're being taught as we're growing up, to, with conforming to the masses. We're just trying not to think differently. And in a second, someone you speak to, they can say something. Maybe something they don't even believe themselves, but, you know, it sounds reasonable, it sounds logical, it sounds all right. And you go, you know, yeah, you're just agreeing, you're just, you're in the conversation, you don't really care one way or the other, but you, you say, yeah, and, and you take on that belief. You give logic to it, it, you make it a part of yourself, and you don't even give it another thought, you don't even care, but it's, but it's in there now, it's, it's, in there in your programming now because you've agreed with it you haven't had a belief one way or the other about it you've taken it on as a belief and you're not in a state of questioning it but our subconscious makes it our new reality and unless we have another conversation that changes that belief this innocent belief that we you know just in a, a random conversation it become it brings up in the next conversation we have about it you know we're and all throughout our lives so before we even realize that we're taking on a belief it became our truth and unless these thoughts and beliefs are given the light of day to be questioned we might not even realize that we didn't even choose this belief we might have taken up one of our parents beliefs or a teachers or some guy on the TV you know and then just because that belief has been validated by a person and the next because they're agreeing with us as well it's just ridiculous that's part of our conditioning we don't get another chance to question it because we know that the words we're about to speak have already been accepted by them by by the norm we have this security in that we know that what we're about to say is not going to be disagreeable so we have these automatic conversations with people all day long we are now on autopilot, thinking we agree with a particular point. It goes into our subconscious and we run that program forever until it is ever questioned again or interrupted or something that is in direct conflict with that belief where we wake up. And that only happens if we're open to questioning it. And so now, not only are we just playing the same old record, if we do have any thoughts that are in direct conflict with that belief, we now hold back from speaking it because we were conditioned to be agreeable, to fit in, to not be weird. And that old record is already accepted by our peers, so we feel safe to speak it. I think that's why most of the conversations that we have in this world are completely fake. They are even real conversations. There's no substance, no real thoughts, no new beliefs, no new insights. They are repetitive programming from all the little yeses that we've said in our entire lifetime. And once we've hold, held a belief long enough, we never question it because it becomes part of what we have defined ourselves to be. It's part of what the world expects us to be. We can't explore it anymore. 
except when we have a life-changing event that disrupts the, plan, the pattern. And then we want to explore new truths because we found that something that we had as a belief doesn't serve us or isn't true for us. We want to explore these new truths, but it's difficult to do even when we realize that we're actually brainwashed because we have so many automatic thoughts that are not even our own, we're not even sure we could trust this new truth that we're exploring because now we're actually aware that we're programmed. And we're afraid of hurting feelings and afraid to be honest and afraid to be wrong, afraid to be questioned, afraid to be rejected, afraid of that person not liking us anymore because we think their ego can't take it. Or that they will feel so uncomfortable with a belief that you know is in direct conflict with their automatic programming, you know? So there's some that are completely auto-conform, no, 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 don't want to, don't want to listen to any kind of difference in opinion, difference in their current belief system. And others are allowing of that. They'll let you speak your truth, even if they don't believe in the same thing. And they're happy to encourage you to speak your truth, even if it's in direct conflict with their own. They don't actually need to be on the same page. Once you say the things you don't feel you're able to say, they're no longer a burden to you. They get released and new stuff enters. It's like, um, okay, it's said now and it disappears and it makes room for new ideas to come in. That's when we learn the most because something might just come out of our mouths that we may reflect on later and realize, hang on, that's not even my belief. That was my parents' belief. That was the teacher speaking out of my mouth. That was the TV. That's not my belief and that's not a belief that serves me. And that's not my truth. And it doesn't feel right. It's media and generational brainwashing. And it doesn't serve me at all to believe that. And in fact, that's why I have this problem or that problem. You don't learn any of this until after you've expressed it. They never see the light of day, so you never question them. And it stays part of your old record, playing over and over and over again, running your life, helping you make the same mistakes over and over again. I know that we can't possibly see the whole truth from our perspectives. We're like fetuses in mummy's tummy. We can't see the whole picture from our perspectives, from our sight. We think that what we see is all there is, but we only see a tiny speck of the magnitude of whatever the truth really is. And even though I know that, I still want to just live as true to myself as I can. But it's the only way to move forward, to not be sheeple, to not be me too's, you know, to not be all torn up inside whenever someone says anything that conflicts with our own conditioning. We've got to let it happen. We've got to let people speak their truth. We grow from it. It helps us think. It helps us think about what we think. All we need to do is speak what we are thinking rather than just saying what we think people want to hear. If we find people that have different beliefs than what we resonate with, that's normal, that's perfect, that's exactly why we're here. We're here not to be me too's, we're, we're here to speak our truth, to have these experiences, these real experiences, to look at it in different perspectives and not just be an actor in a movie, we need to be as real as we can be. I don't want to be afraid to be honest. I don't want to be afraid that people won't like me. That should not be something I fear after everything that I've gone through. Uh, uh, being myself is not something that I should be afraid of. I don't know if society says that, but fuck them. That is not what we're here for. We're not here to live in fear and to conform and live this act. No matter what the truth is, and I don't even know what it is, but that, I know it's not that. So what was the purpose of this video? That was to just get it all out. All this crap that I've been thinking, but also, I guess, I really hope that anyone ends, who ends up watching it starts to question their own beliefs. And I don't want to turn people's lives upside down, but they might find that 95% of what they're living automatically is not even their own beliefs and not serving them and is not truth. And I'm going to also try and hit you with some big, crazy, powerful, life-changing stuff later and I need your brain to be ready for it, so you need to start thinking for yourself. You know, sorry, sorry this went so long, at least... At least it's all out now, seeing the light of day. 
one of my truths has been spoken so I don't have to think about it anymore and now I can move on to whatever is next in my life.